Kayla Willis takes her six-year-old son Brenton to this park quite often. It's one of their favorites right on the Mississippi River in Moline. Across from the swings sit two tank farms storing millions of gallons of oil products. I've noticed them, but I've never really thought about them. Willis says they blend into the skyline. She's never thought about them as a potential threat to her family's drinking water. I don't know exactly what I'm drinking and what's in it. The Quad Cities is full of businesses storing, using, and shipping chemicals. 1.1 million pounds of sulfuric acid, 990,000 pounds of hydrochloric acid, 475,000 pounds of anhydrous ammonium. Those are just chemicals labeled extremely hazardous by the government. Oil and oil products are also stored in huge amounts. Tanks from Clinton to Muscatine can hold over 49 million gallons. Making sure those chemicals stay out of the water keep emergency planners busy. We have, I think, 23 public water systems that pull from the river. We have the National Wildlife Refuge right along the river. Dave Hokanson works on water quality projects for the Upper Mississippi River Basin Association. He says the Mississippi River has a lot of industry crammed into small areas. Particularly within the Twin Cities, the Quad Cities, and St. Louis, there are areas of you know, very intense uh, industrial use. Fire inspectors try to reduce those chemical inventories as best they can. Davenport Hazardous Material Coordinator Ed Grothes says he always asks businesses using hazardous chemicals if they can get by with less. There's no reason to be keeping, let's say, 50 cylinders of propane gas for your forklifts on site when this week you could get by with, say, 6 to 10. He says Davenport businesses have been receptive to the idea of storing less hazardous materials can bring down their hazmat permit fees. Grothis says it also benefits the neighbors. If we can reduce the amount of hazardous materials at these businesses within the city, we are therefore reducing the amount of risk to that business and the community. But not all businesses have that option. There are major chemical, agrochemical, and oil facilities throughout the QCA. They supply the raw materials other businesses need to do their jobs. Other rules and inspections help keep their products on their property and out of the water. Back at the Moline Park. It's scary. I mean, I'm just an everyday person. I, I don't know, you know, all the details of it, but it's scary. I mean, this is my water. Kayla says she trusts the city water plant to keep her drinking water clean, but she says it's a little unnerving to be raising her child around a potential soup of chemicals. Mark Stevens, KWQC, TV6 News. The first tip-off we're going to get is likely going to be right here, something unusual. Moline Water Utility Manager Greg Swanson says his plant operators check what's coming in from the river every four hours. They'll adjust the water treatment based on what they're seeing. During a spill, that's too late. If we can keep a contaminant from entering the river, um, we don't have to worry about it subsequently in terms of treatment. Hundreds of potential contaminants sit throughout the Quad Cities. Each site gets inspected for its own hazards, but spills still do happen. Case in point, the coal desinking. 39,000 gallons of fuel oil spilled from the towboat back in November, testing emergency crews and the water plants. We were really on the lookout for it. We never actually saw any of that fuel spill here at our plant, but we were on the lookout for it. If a spill contaminates the river, the most powerful tool the water plants have is time. They can keep treating water until the spill reaches them. Then they'll shut down. The problem is, right now, no automatic early warning system exists on the Mississippi. Our water systems are concentrated around the Twin Cities area, and then there's a large gap. And there's a bunch around the Quad Cities and a few down um, further, and then you hit St. Louis. Dave Hokanson works on water quality projects for the Upper Mississippi River Basin Association. He says a large gap exists between the Twin Cities and Quad Cities water plants. No other city uses river water for drinking in between Minneapolis and the Quad Cities. That means there's little demand to install a warning network. There haven't been large spills, and the river is so big, spills quickly get diluted. It's very hard to get traction and funding when there, you do something proactively. Moline Waters' Greg Swanson says his city is being proactive. It's taken over a monitor that was part of a pilot program, testing whether mussels could help detect toxins in the river. The test was successful. Now Moline has its own mussels installed in the monitor at the Bettendorf Mid-American Energy Power Plant. But the key element is the bivalves with the sensors. The mussels. Yes, exactly. Those mussels filter food from the water. 
If they sense any toxins, the muscles close up. And when they do, an attached computer starts taking water samples. Tells the sample pump to start running so we can collect a sample of that water and then do a more detailed analysis. And it can also be used to trigger a notification to anybody that's on the email list, hey, something's happening here. The warning from the muscles provides Swanson the critical tool he needs to get ready for a possible plant shutdown. Time. If we can get an hour, two hour notice, it, that's huge. Time to fill the storage tanks and figure out what's in the river before it turns up under his operator's noses. It's one monitor in place, but hundreds of miles of river above the Quad Cities remain unwatched. In Moline, Mark Stevens, KWQC, TV6 News. If one of those should rupture, we have to be able to contain that. Well, with the way that this facility was uh, designed, that we could take everything that you can see here with Envision, and if it all ruptured at once, we would still have enough to keep it off of the street. Valley Distribution CEO Ken Reif makes his living storing hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil. He's never had a spill, but says he's ready. It was close to eight rail cars that our containment will hold. Instead, he's got a plan. The EPA requires them for large oil storage facilities with above ground tanks like Rife's. Above ground tanks with chemicals, on the other hand, don't have to have a plan. That flaw was revealed in January when a tank leaked 10,000 gallons of a cold washing chemical into a West Virginia river, spoiling the water for 300,000 people. Don't make baby formula with it, don't brush your teeth with it, don't wash with it, don't shower with it. Don't drink it. I think it was fair warning to the rest of us, to the rest of the nation, that this is a hazard that is unregulated and we are unprotected. Illinois Senator Dick Durbin wants to change that. He signed onto a bill toughening the rules for above ground chemical storage tanks. Annual inspections would be required. Right now, Durbin says the state set the rules and there are gaps. I think the regulation of the federal government should extend to all tank storage above ground and underground as well to protect the public. The Illinois Fire Marshal inspects tanks starting at 100 gallons, but it doesn't actually know where all the tanks are in the state. State rules created back in the 80s never required all tanks to get registered. The Iowa Fire Marshal only gets involved with tanks that hold at least 1,100 gallons and only inspects them if someone files a complaint. Regular inspections fall to local fire departments like Davenport's. Our guys will note that, hey, they do have tanks. This is where they're at. These are the problems that these tanks present. Davenport Fire Department has met coordinator Ed Grothes says he has a list of every tank in the city. Businesses across Davenport have enough above ground storage for nearly 10 million gallons of oil and chemicals. Grothes's teams inspect them once a year. We look at the entire picture and want to make sure that that business is as fire safe as it can be. Valley Distribution's Rife says the existing oil storage rules are tough but fair. His spill plan passed EPA scrutiny when it was inspected three years ago. Every day it's our name on the line. Whether the rules will change to include all above ground chemical storage tanks remains to be seen. Mark Stevens, KWQC, TV6 News. Moline is paying for the final part of an advanced warning monitor upstream. It's attaching muscles to a computer to measure toxins quickly. Congress is also working on new rules for storage tanks because the first hearings after the West Virginia chemical spill revealed gaps in how chemical storage tanks are watched over.